it, it seems it seems to me that after your initial skepticism, though, you took to it like a proverbial duck to water. I mean, is that, is that true? Once you once you were sort of launched, it seems like you were you were away. Yes, I can't imagine not doing it. Now. It was funny, and I think I think there was two things that got me really into it. One was the pleasure of the commenters and finding that there was a kind of whole new set of relationships I had, which became quite enticing. But I think the other was that I. I realised, and I shouldn't have realised this before, but it was only on doing it that I saw the implications. I realised that it wasn't, it didn't have to be a dumbing down medium at all. In fact, quite the reverse. What really makes the difference between a blog and a newspaper article, however learned the newspaper article, is of course the links. So I found that I could talk, I hope interestingly, about sometimes quite abstruse topics because I could just link people to the data. If, for example, you want to talk about... I'm taking this out of the air, really. If you want to talk about the self-presentation, the PR, the spin-doctoring of Romans in the first century BC AD and how like it might be to our own politicians, then you want to refer to the Emperor Augustus's own autobiography, the Reis Gestae. Well, that's not, you know, that's not household knowledge, actually. And you'd veer away from it in a newspaper because you'd think, they're going to say, oh, it's this, you know, and it's, it's not going to, it's not going to add to your point, it's just going to confuse people. Now, on a blog, you can put a link to the whole text, it's not all that long, so that you can talk about Augustus's Reis Gestae and they can click on it and they can read it in Latin, they can read it in English, they can read a little summary, or they can read the Wikipedia mm. entry. Um, and uh, so you can you can write for many levels of knowledge. Yes. I mean, I'm not talking about writing for clever or stupid people, that's not, you know, I, I hope that I'm writing my blog for people who are intelligent, but they might be ignorant about what I do. But you can entirely even out the yes. the knowledge factors. You can sort of penetrate to different levels. You can go to the level that suits yeah. you best. Yeah. Now, the question you've clearly set yourself up for now is, <laughs> <laughs> that being so, it's now appearing as a book in, yeah. in printed form. So there's obviously, there's obviously a loss there. Yeah. So yeah. what, what um, prompted you to go into print with it? Um, well, the, the true answer? I mean, the true answer is... A publisher friend who I much trust, and much trust is the absolute essential part of this, said that very likely edited and selected, it would actually make a really nice book, the, some of the posts put together with the comments. And he was pretty clear, as I was, that it's a different commodity as a book, partly because you don't have links. But on the other hand, I think that there are losses, clearly, and that, there's also gains and changes, which finally made me think that it wasn't simply self-regarding to publish this. Because I think, actually, it's extremely good fun, and it cha- the, na- the fun side of the blog changes in the book, and you get a different side to it. And I think one of those things is simply the bookness of it, actually. It's flipping and browsing in a book is still a pleasure, a huge pleasure that you don't get online. Mm. You know, you don't have to scroll down. You can actually flip the pages. And I think that's wonderful. And it enables the the blogs to be read in different orders. You can go through to the kind of topics that interest you much more easily than the click and search mm. programme. And also, I think the other thing, they'll be able to read this in different places. Because I have a very, very strong suspicion And this is partly because you know when people are hitting on your blog. (laughs) My blog, and I think every blog, it's not just me, my blog is a, by and large, it's what people read during the day. You've got 10 minutes to go at your desk before you've got that lunch date or meeting, let's say, meeting. And what should I do? And you've got a few blogs that you read because... Hits go down at the weekends, not up. They go down in the summer holidays. You know, these are people people actually blog in the interstices of work. Now, put it in a book, and they can read it in the loo, and they can read it in the train. I know people sort of do actually do 
their email and stuff on the train now. But they don't take their laptop to the loo. And the loo is one of the, the, <laughs> the best... Last, the last bastions the, of freedom. Yeah, freedom, you know, a laptop-free <laughs> area. You know, I'm sure there will be a little invention which will enable this quite comfortably very soon. But for the time well, being... Well, you your iPhone, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> For the time being, you know, I hope that this is taking my blog to the country's lose, really. We've kind of talked about the sort of demystification. It seemed to me demystification was one of the, the aims of the blog, but one of the other ones, it seemed to me, was provocation. Now, tell me about, <laughs> uh, about this uh, function to provoke. Well, no, no blog's a good blog unless it, unless it kind of annoys somebody sometimes, you know, otherwise. Uh, it's entirely missed its opportunity. And I think what, you've, what is fun and what has got people going about the blog and some of these posts are in the book are are the places where I speak my mind I wouldn't I mean it was the blog was given a a a byline when I first started it which I now find terribly embarrassing but I'm stuck with it of wickedly subversive Mary B is a wickedly subversive commentator and I thought this is actually dreadful isn't it because you it's know, your homeric epithet it's going to be stuck it, with you forever i'm afraid it's like you know m- you know moon-eyed here or something <laughs> uh, and you know, i thought well wickedly subversive on occasion but how could you be for wickedly subversive forever you know <laughs> that's sort of a contradiction in terms however i think you know amongst my targets in the world uh, they're friendly targets you know they're, as well as demystification and putting the side right for classics it is kind of cant and double think and i do try from time to time but particularly when the general media are going soppy over various issues to have a bit of straight talking and these posts do tend to get rather more comments and rather more ranting comments than others 